Matt Johnson here, another episode of Deck Talk. We are in the heat of the summer. A lot of positive comments after the last episode where we talked about jig worming. That was one of the more popular topics that people wanted me to address. We talked about the ways to jig worm, briefly talked about the spots, talked about some of the techniques, the rods, the reels, the line that go into play. So that's a good topic for this time of year because that's what you're going to be focusing on when you hit the water. Branching off of that topic, I got a lot of emails, a couple phone calls, a couple text messages, stuff on Facebook, people asking, all right, Matt, you talked about finding that hard bottom, how important it is to find the hard bottom on the weed line, whether you're fishing lakes like Minnetonka with heavy milfoil, whatever it might be, but finding the hard bottom where these fish are going to be specifically, instead of just fishing deep, what does it mean exactly to find these fish? So what I want to talk about today is finding the right fish. So many anglers fish the right spots, but they don't fish the spots the right way. So today we're going to talk about the right spot. And how we're going to go about doing this is I'm going to teach you, hopefully, some of the very important ways to find that hard bottom and stay on top of it. Every deep water weed point is not the same. Every deep weed line is not the same. Every spot that looks similar on the map is not the same because of bottom content. So today we're going to focus on finding that hard bottom. So for you, for you anglers that target bass, walleyes, panfish, pike, muskies, doesn't matter what it is, as we get into these hot summer months where the water is starting to hit upper 70s and 80 degrees, these fish will school out deeper on these hard bottom, hard bottom safe havens. So for me, the first thing is finding where that is. Oftentimes you look at your Lorance unit, your Vexla unit, whatever it might be, and you determine where that hard bottom is by the signal it gives you. One of my number one tools is my Vexlar flasher because it allows me to see that hard bottom very easily. We know the difference between hard and soft bottom and a great piece is if you go to Vexlar.com and do a search under their tips and articles and videos, they have a phenomenal piece called the ABCs of your Vexlar flasher that talks about everything you need to know to read what that flasher is telling you. Something I highly recommend not only putting that tool on your boat but then reading that follow-up article to understand how that Vexlar flasher educates you to find what you're doing. So finding that hard bottom is number one. And how you can find that with the flasher is the variance in red. The harder, the more crisp red signal you have, the harder the bottom. The green, the orange, the flickers, some of the wider beams with all that smattered in between is going to be a softer bottom. Again, remember we talked about the double echo in past issues or segments where that is where it transitions from hard to soft. So once you have an idea of where the harder soft bottom is, you mark that spot on your GPS, so you add a waypoint. Then you go back through with some of these tactics I'm going to show you to get right on top of where the fish, so you're fishing the right spot the right way. So now we've found the right spot. We know where the hard bottom is. How do you find the hard bottom with what you're presenting so you know the bait's presented, where the fish are in that strike zone? For me, one of the go-tos right away is a crankbait. And for me, the Samuel Boxer is probably my go-to. What that does, it allows you to fish deep. You can cast out there a long ways. Work the bait in until you get to the desired depth. If you're trying to find the hard bottom on a weed line, let's say it's 8, 12, 15 feet, I can take that box that it gets down 15 feet and work it until I find that bottom. And then when you're feeling with the rod tip, you'll know a difference because all of a sudden you feel it starting to grind. And you want to use lines that allow you to get down there. So whether you're using a fluorocarbon line like Vicious Pro Elite, which as we know fluorocarbon sinks, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, so either fluorocarbon or thin braid. A lot of top level bass anglers will tell you to fish fluorocarbon and they're 100% right. Myself, I also like to fish like a 10 pound braid because it's very thin diameter. I can cast it a mile and it's amazing how fast it cuts through that water and gets down to the right depth but then it gives me the utmost sensitivity so I can feel those hard bottom and those rocks so I know to hold on because that's where the fish are going to be holding. So for me, a crankbait's an easy way to find that hard bottom quickly. And once you find that hard bottom, oftentimes you can come back through with some other, me uh, other methods. But for me, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of mistakes anglers make is when they approach a piece of structure, a lot of times you want to keep the most consistent action, meaning you want to keep that bait at the bottom as long as possible. So pay attention to your GPS or a lake map, however it might be you're looking to find that structure, and make sure you can try and keep your bait at the bottom the longest. So what I often do, is I'll approach a piece of structure from an angle. So instead of coming straight on or crossed and making a cast where my bait's only hitting the bottom for let's say a few yards, I'll come up on top of the structure, either work the bait back up or work the bait from deep or shallow to deep depending on how the structure lays. Meaning I want that bait, that crankbait to hit the bottom as long as I can. I don't want it to hit the bottom for three little bumps and then come back to the boat. 
So I want to make sure I make precision cast, and that's where it comes into fishing the right spot the right way. Keep that bait in contact with the strike zone, which is the hard bottom, as long as possible. So maybe you're casting a deep diving crankbait in only eight, nine feet of water because it'll stay down fast and get down there deep and stay on the bottom so it's in the strike zone. So that's very important. So boat positioning is also half the battle in order to keep your boat and spot and presentation right where it needs to be. So the crankbait's a great way to find that hard bottom fast and catch those fish quick. If I can get fish to go in a crankbait, believe me, that's what I'm fishing almost 99% of the time. But there's times where you get that one or two active fish out of a school with the crankbait, and that's it. Don't move to a new spot. Come back through with what we now call football jigs. You've heard it, the rock jig, football jig. Two terms that are heavily used, and what that is, it says just what you hear. It's a football head, and what that does is it's heavy. This happens to be a one ounce lure. It's tiny, small profile. It drops quick, hits the bottom, and what you want it to do is make contact with the bottom quickly and efficiently no matter the wind conditions. So this is another search tool so you can cast it out there, let it hit the bottom, and trust in your sensitive G. Loomis or Shimano rods, whatever you be using, so you can feel that bottom and keep it in the strike zone. So rock jigs are very important as a follow-up tool, even your go-to option when you're trying to find that hard bottom. And for me, if you're fishing a very steep weed line, a lot of times what anglers do is they cast up on that weed line, they see the milfoil, whatever it might be, they might have a buoy, there might be a marker, whatever it is, they hit that spot, they made the good cast, but they automatically flip their spinning reel or start to retrieve on their bait caster. And what happens is the pendulum effect, that lure will actually start to swing back to your boat. So instead of fishing those fish that are right on the weed line, right in the bottom of the base where the weeds grow, you're missing them because the bait's coming back to the boat. So when your lure hits that water, give it a couple seconds. Feed it some line, especially with a spinning rod, so that jig worm, whatever presentation you're using, drops straight down to the base to where those weeds hit the bottom. That's where the strike zone is so those fish are come up and ambush. So next time you're making a cast to a weed line, pull some line in or give it a couple seconds before you flip your bale and start to retrieve and work your presentation. A lot of times those are where your fish are and you'll get bit. So again, it comes back to you're on the right spot, you're just not fishing it the right way. So crankbaits, rock jigs, I'll tip my rock jigs with any kind of trailer you might want to be. We won't get too detailed in the types of exact presentations and how you rig them. But that sort of presentation of rock jigs works exceptionally well. There's many brands out there. You know, this happens to be an all-star jig or a North Star jig, Howie Lee, good friend of mine. Uh, and you got the all-terrain jig, Steve Hauge, another good friend of mine. These come in a variety of weights and sizes. You can see this one from all-terrain is an ounce. It's not weight or it's not skirted with anything. So now you can take your favorite Mr. Twister plastic. I use that new pocket crop, put it on there. And now you can throw it down there and fish the same manner as you would, say, a skirted rod jig. Same concept, gets down fast. You can see it's got a wide profile, hits those rocks, hits a hard bottom shoots a shockwave back up your line into your rod tip so you know that's where the hard bottom is and that's where the fish are going to be feeding. So a couple options there. We just touched the tip of the iceberg in terms of the rock jig, but there's many, many other choices. Title Shop makes one too. This comes where you can actually rig another plastic, but that's just, again, we're just touching on all the variable choices out there. So. Let's talk about the football jig, a very important option for those anglers out there fishing. I want to move on to the Carolina rig, another option for fishing hard bottom and finding that right spot, but with more of a finesse application. Carolina rig is basically simple. You start off with a heavy bullet weight or an egg weight or whatever you want to use. This happens to be a one ounce tungsten bullet weight. Smaller profile, but heavier because tungsten is denser than lead. So you can put it on there. What this does, is it gets down quick. The first thing is you do is you slide this on bullet point towards the tip of your rod. Then you attach a swivel. So that stops this from sliding. And then from there to your offering, your presentation, depending on how long you want it to be, 18 inches, two feet, three feet, you'll tie that on so there's a gap between your swivel and your presentation. And what that does is it stops your weight from sliding down onto your presentation here. And when a bass or a weary fish picks that up, they can pull the line out as the weight stays in the bottom and they won't feel resistance, which allows these fish to come and grab this offering, whether they're pressured, finicky, neutral fish, whatever it might be. So it's very important to have that sliding option for some of these pressured fish. So again, what's down here is not as important as the technique we're using. You can deploy this, cast it a long ways, it drops quick, you can feel the bottom. All you're doing is doing a drag and pause method of retrieve. Very simple, so if I'm not fishing the crankbait, which is the most erratic, most aggressive, covering a lot of water, if I'm not fishing the football jig, I'll oftentimes go to a Carolina rig which is another option for finding that hard bottom and getting down there quick and presenting your bait in the right manner. After the Carolina rig, 
what we talked about last week, I won't touch on a lot, is just your standard jig worm. And for me, a lot of times I'm taking that Mr. Twister ever popular comedia, I'm biting an inch off the head, and I'm throwing it on just an all-terrain mighty jig. It's heavier, not quite as heavy as the presentation we showed earlier, but once I figured out that the fish are there, so I'm using my Salmo crankbait, I'm dropping a rock jig or a Carolina rig, I know the fish are there, and they might be finicky, I want to dead stick them, I'll fish something like this. Your jig worm cast it out there, you know where the spot is, the bait hits the water like we talked about, you're not going to flip your bale, you're going to count to one, two, three, four, five, or however long it takes to get down to the bottom, then you flip your bale and start to retrieve so you're keeping the bait in contact with the most desired strike zone before you get back to the boat. That'll help you catch a lot more fish. So we touched just the tip of the arsenal or tip of the iceberg when it comes to this. Most importantly, finding that hard bottom. Using your Vexlar flasher or your LCD electronics, your structure scan, whatever it might be. I'm big on a fish scout Vexlar underwater camera as well where I drop it down and actually see the boulders, the hard bottom on a weed line. Spent many days just cruising weed lines on my favorite lakes looking for hard bottom spots. Marking with my GPS because I can guarantee you at some point fish are going to be holding there. Whether it's now or in a week or in a month, they will be there. They might be there in the winter time as well. So these are spots that fish will locate throughout the given season. And what you do, especially tournament anglers out there, you understand what it takes to have your milk run. You mark all these spots in your GPS and you hit each one until you find that school. Because once you find that school, they're going to be stacked up and hungry and eager to bite. So again, finding that hard bottom. Figuring out where it's at, marking spots with the GPS. I see guys even throw buoys out there, but you know what happens when you throw a marker buoy most of the times on especially pressured lakes. It draws in the crowd because that symbolizes, you know what, that person just found something good. So if you can avoid throwing a marker buoy, I highly recommend just trying to hone in your skills to figure out where that fish is. And what I do oftentimes is if I find that spot, and let's say I kept, catch a fish on my first cast in the crankbait. We found the right spot, we feel that hard bottom, a fish bites. I'll instantly mark a Jeep spot on my GPS and I'll look at a position on the shoreline that I cast it. Let's say that green top awning pontoon lift. So now I get back on that waypoint where I mark the spot and I make the same cast right back towards that green awning. Because oftentimes it's the position your bait comes across a piece of structure. We just talked about the right spot being fished the right way and many times it sounds very ignorant or stupid. Like why would fish do that? But I can't always explain it. But fish are creatures of habit, of instinct. So a bait coming across a piece of structure from a certain direction sometimes can trigger fish. So one angler might come in from the west and miss those fish because he's casting across this way. The next angler coming from a different direction, next thing you know, he's catching fish. So that's where it comes down to fishing the right spot the right way. Don't make two, three casts and feel the bottom and count it out. Try it from a handful of different angle, angles, maybe a couple different presentations before you call it done. So. Very important tips there, finding the hard bottom, very important. Some of the presentations you use, making sure you get within the strike zone, so don't just make a cast and start to retrieve. Don't fish the top of the water column, get all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you're feeling the bottom at all times, so make sure you're using a heavy enough presentation to feel that and make that productive. So hopefully this helped answer some of those tips on fishing the right spot, focusing on hard bottom. So get out there, get after it. I can tell you right now, fishing some of these lakes, that a lot of these fish are stacked up on these hard bottom spots. If you find these spots, you will find fish, get bit, and have a lot of fun. So, Matt Johnson with Deck Talk, thanks for watching. Keep sending me your feedback. I really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And we'll get you next time with another important tip and topic that you guys want to learn about. Thanks for watching.